Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Doodle Robot and today we're going to discuss some swatching and do some swatching. And we're going to talk about how to make your own gouache. Basically gouache is a an opaque watercolor. So we're going to use just one little item here to make our gouache. Let's get that turned around right. We are going to use Van Gogh, can you see it okay? Opaque white to make our own gouache. So I have been doing some swatching today. Uh, one of my goals for April and May is to revisit my swatch charts here. This is my current swatch book. I do want to keep, uh, for the most part, all of my swatches in one book, with the exception of a few things, which I'll show you in a second. It's gotten a little unruly, though. I've got my Satin Glazing Liquid test page here uh, for whatever I want to use on top of Satin Glazing Liquid, be it uh, colored pencils, water-based markers, ink tents, watercolor, whatever, anything, even like pastels or my gel crayons, stuff like that. I've got my inventory, my Prismacolor inventory here. I learned a lesson. I started keeping it in ink, and you'll see that in a second. But yeah, this is just my Prismacolor inventory, so I know what I need to order when I go to order from Dick Blick. And here are my some of my new... Uh, oh, that's for something else. Um, some of my new swatch charts that I made, I think this will work better than, or additionally into what I have been using thus far. So I've made some of those. So here is my Prismacolor, just used to be my inventory, but I made a mistake and did it in ink. I don't know why I did that. But this is my Prismacolor at a glance. And here I have my Prismacolors just by lights, by yellows, by yellow oranges, yellows, yellow oranges and oranges, reds, pinks, purples, blues, greens, grays, and then all the earth tones. This is like so out of order. My silky gel crayons here. More more colored pencils. This is Pastelo and Brute Fooner. I'm I may I may at some point rethink the Prismacolor situation cuz I have to flick through Good grief, five pages of stuff, which is why I made this. I was hoping I could condense it down to be able to look at all of those color families in two pages. We shall see, though. Uh, we're not doing that today. That's 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 a summertime project. Uh, I don't need to change these. These are fine. I want to do it for my Crayolas because, again, I have to flip through. This is just the order they came in in the box, which I'm probably just going to keep them in that order. One, two, three, and four. Four. And at the top of my swatching list in April and May is to get my gel pin situation <laughs> situated. There's gel pins here, there's gel pins here, there's gel pins here, 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 here. I did, they're all over the place. So I want to get those on down to two pages as well so I can just look at what gel pins I have. Um... And I did it, I made my swatch book this way so that I can just change, you know, if I need to resituate my gel pins, I can just resituate my gel pins and get rid of those things. Like, I don't have to go and redo everything I own. So I like these little, I like these little clear, what are they, page protectors, file things. So I can just switch around what I need. This is working fine. I did get a new pack of, I think, six Tombos that I need to add here. I'm not redoing it for that. We're just going to add it on the side. <laughs> but I like my Tombos on, like, regular paper. And these Tombos, or these Ohuhu water markers here, are on, this is prepped with satin glazing liquid. And I have, you know, one layer, two layers, three layers, because they are very muted out, which I actually like, because I think they're too dark here. Like you don't have enough light tones. But anyways, I think my alcohol marker pages are good. I'm starting to get more into that. I probably foresee buying more alcohol markers in the future if that trend continues. My apple barrel thing is fine unless I get more 
We'll deal with that later. This one's fine unless I get more. Um, my Ohuhu paint markers are fine. My Neo Color 2s are fine. This right now is the biggest problem. So the stickles and liquid pearls page is fine. And I got room to grow there, so we're good with that. The problem comes in with my watercolors, which is what we're doing today. As you can see, this is I bought these before I discovered coloring. And I had them just on a big piece of watercolor paper, and I actually cut it in half over here so I could fit it in here in the swatch book because it was kind of big and unruly. It wasn't really working for me. Uh, but this is not really working for me either because here is the here's the first row here's part of the first row and then here's the second part of the first row so you can see me I'm often dipping my stuff into the wrong, the wrong paint pot um, so yeah so we're redoing that and I really like and we're redoing this one in the same way because I really like what I did with my pastels here. So I'll just show you the rest here. And then we have ink tents, which could probably be in a better place somewhere. This is my old uh, thing that I would swatch on. And that, I'm sure, will still work for some things that I don't have very much of. But I'm going to switch to the new one for my larger collections of things. So yeah, so... I like what I did here on the Jane Davenport's, the pastels. Um, I just like that they're in the lid. I can flip it over and I can see what goes where. And I put it like this so I can see what's, what's in each palette. Because I have two palettes. I had the two that were offered on Amazon. I wish Amazon would get all four of them. I rather like them. I've used them once, but... <laughs> We shall see. So I like how this is working for this style of medium that comes in, you know, containers like this. So I did it today. I already did it for my collegiate semi-moist metallic watercolor paints. These are the only watercolor, uh, metallic watercolor paints I have. I have that somewhere. Here we go. This is what they look like. I know I'm casting all kinds of shadows. I'm not filming in the middle of the night today. It's Sunday and my coloring mojo was just gone. I was just staring at the coloring book yesterday a little bit too. So I figured I'd do something else. So these are my collegiate ones. These were a gift. I don't have any other metallic watercolor paints. I've got lots of metallic acrylic paints. This seems like enough for me though. Although when I see other people's collections, I've been painting, there's paint all over me, sorry. Um, it was from here. <laughs> I, you know, when I see other people's collections and they have a lot more, I get, you know, I get enticed to buy more and then I, I calm down and I'm like, I have enough that I don't use all that much. So this will fit right in here, thus eliminating the need to have it in my, in my thing over there. I'm waiting for these to dry. So I'll probably keep it like that in there. A little more minimal. I'm always looking for the minimal, the minimal in everything. I don't want too, too much stuff laying around the house. And so today I was doing the same thing with my Mei Liang pretty, these are, when I ordered them, they said Mei Liang, but when they came, they said pretty excellent. So whatever. And I, I purchased these, like I said, before I started coloring, I was wanting to teach myself to watercolor paint, but I didn't want to get, you know, I've learned my lesson. I didn't want to get an expensive set and decide that it wasn't for me. Uh, but in trying to teach myself watercolor painting and not being successful at that, I just was in a bad situation a year ago with work. I've talked about it before, but it seems to be easing up and I was just not in the creative space to like, teach myself how to watercolor paint so uh, yeah so I made a better a better swatch that can just sit in there and I can easily see I've numbered it so I can easily find what I'm looking for so this is the original that we have and then because several months ago when I had this in a haul way back then uh, several months ago I saw people you know the craze was uh, buying what were they buying 
opaque watercolors or gouache. I don't know what they were buying. Um, I think, oh, pastel watercolors. So I bought, instead of buying a whole expensive set, again, same issue, and, you know, having a bunch of sets laying around the house that I may or may not use, I just decided to go the cheap route and get the, you know, Van Gogh opaque white so I could make my own pastels. Uh, which are basically, you know, white opaque watercolor mixed with the color of paint that I want, and then thus I have pastels. Now, of course, these pastels are made with white. Some some pastels in watercolor, are, they're just pastels. They're not made, they're not muted with white, but these are going to be thus basically turning them into gouache. So it's a pastel version of gouache. So these are all the same the same colors here. They are nice and opaque. I've been testing them. I got this far and I took a break and then I decided I would film the rest. And then we have the, the next layer there. And we'll just do these last two and the last layer together. So I've got, I've got my paints, I've got my little palette, I've got water, I've got a gross, disgusting towel that I use for my brushes. I've got my opaque watercolor. And I've got some paper towels. Oh, I did forget something, though. One second. You think you're totally prepared. I've got, uh, this is just a dollar store item. It's just a drippy bottle, so I'm gonna I'm gonna prep those. I'm just gonna put one drop in each color here. I hope you can't hear the wind. It, the wind suddenly kicked up. It looks like we're gonna get a storm. I'm waiting for the smell of rain. This was from the dollar store. I also have a spray bottle that I will use to keep my gouache moist because it dries it wants to dry out pretty quickly we're going to clean up what i what i did before and this is a good test to i wasn't sure i wasn't sure the gouache would come off but it will that's good my day is made um lid on there so mostly i use the dripper bottle for my watercolors and I use the spray bottle more for my acrylics keeping those moist I mean I live in the desert so stuff dries out very quickly so it looks like even if you make too much of an opaque pastel color aka gouache you are going to be able to just let it sit there until you come back to it again I often leave my my paint's just in the top of my lid here. I don't want to waste them. Oh, it looks like my lid is stained. Okay. All right, so we are going to make some opaque pastel watercolors, which are basically gouache. Super simple. I'm just going to get out a tiny amount of this I'm basically using and this it seems like this cost three or four dollars I could be wrong and I'll put a link in the description for you I don't usually tell people I put links in the description but I do all right so let's get a little zoom you in a little closer here See what we're doing. Oh, sorry for the shaky camera. All right. Let's get you a little more over here. Trying to get everything the way I like it. Okay. So we are starting with Payne's Gray. And so I'm just, I'm just going to scoop out a bit of that. And it's equal parts, basically. Paint's gray. I don't want to mess up my white, so I'm washing my brush between 
between getting that out and getting the white out, we need to spray the white. It's, it's the desert. Okay. And this is just a, just a representation for me. So I don't, I can't see what I'm doing at all. It does, when you paint it on, it's lighter, and then it does dry darker. Now, of course, like I said, this is just a representation. I could, of course, make this darker or lighter, depending on what I needed. But this is just a, kind of a bird's eye glance for me if I decide I want to make some pastel watercolors. All right, next is yellow-green. A lot of washing your brush in this part. Oh, and I'm just using a Blick Scholastic paintbrush. It's well used and loved. Ooh, I like that. My new favorite color. I got the opaque white because, number one, you know, the trend in coloring was that everybody was, you know, Hopping on the watercolor pastel bandwagon. And this white appeared to be useless, so I'm like, mm, I think we can we can find something that would work. And I would not have too much stuff laying around my house. Alright, so we're on to the last layer here. How's everybody's weekend going? Is everybody getting coloring done? I feel I lost my mojo. I was, you know, sometimes this happens to me. Maybe it happens to you too. I I got my momentum going to really finish up a, a bunch of pages and start a bunch of whips. But that momentum ran out once I, once the end of the month came and I filmed my end of the end of the month pages and does that happen to other people? Oh, I like that color too. That was what was that tree green? These Mei Liang have some strange colored names, like fresh blue, and f there's another fresh thing, fresh purple. Are they meaning, like, maybe it didn't translate well or something? Like, did they mean true blue or... Sometimes I wonder about these things. Oh, you're not in screen there. Sorry. Okay. I'm excited to try these in coloring books. I think probably, I feel like a good place to experiment with things is a Carla Magana book. You, I mean, you can't screw up those pages. They're just, they're very freeing. Sorry, I had to get a different pair of glasses so I could actually see what I'm doing. Okay, I had my glasses that I use for coloring, which when I'm closer at things, so we're at number three. And we're still not in camera. Three. Okay. And I have yet to actually use these in in a coloring book, so you know I don't really know how they'll how they'll work, but I think they'll work pretty good. I think they'll work like wash, like wash behaves. I'm 
number four. I can see that when I couldn't see, I didn't paint very well. <laughs> it's better now. I could see using these in a Rita Berman book. And I think I have seen people using them in a Rita Berman book on the cute little beach houses and stuff. I think these would work great. One thing I may try today, I just thought of this a few minutes before I turn on the camera. All right, let's see. Olive green is number five. five. I love this olive green color. And tree green. I like those a lot. Are you in camera there? Will I like it when it's pastel? So one thing I might try today is taking some of my alcohol markers. I've seen my students do this a lot in class. Well, when I taught drawing and painting. Um, and they would put on the alcohol markers and then they throw just rubbing alcohol at it and makes all kinds of weird little splotches and stuff. I kind of want to try that today in a Carla Magana book. Just because I've got no coloring mojo, so I may as well just experiment with things. Make myself yet another whip that I need to complete. Has anybody tried that? If you have, tell me about it. Oh gosh, I've got... <laughs> I have got paint all over the kitchen counter, and I'm renting, so that's a little scary. Oops, sorry. Does anybody else have this problem when they're making videos like this? Like, I can't, it's super hard for me to see what I'm doing when I've got the camera and the lights and all that stuff going on. Number seven. Well, this yellow sienna that I'm using is weird. It's right here. It's one of the very like gra grainy ones, I guess. My yeah. Can you see what's happening there? It's really like gritty. Oh, well, this is a nice color. If we lightened it even further, it would probably be the color of like old paper. Yeah, I would think so. Would be a good color to have. Number 
number eight. If I'm not careful, I usually dip it in the wrong, the wrong thing. Oh my gosh, it's drying out. Also, I could make this thicker or thinner depending on how much I water down the, the opaque watercolor. If I wanted to make it really thick, I would probably not water it down, although it, it's pretty thick when you squeeze it out of the... too thick, I would say. But yeah, I could make it thicker or thinner as I wanted. Just like you can with everything else that's watercolor. We're going to need more. We need more white, a smidge. I have to hold it up out of the light so I can see it. All right, three more. Van Dyke Brown is next. Does that, am I the only one or does that always remind everybody else of uh, Dick Van Dyke? It always makes me think of him. Is he still alive? <coughs> Excuse me. You youngsters out there, do you even know who Dick Van Dyke is? Have you seen his old shows? Mary Poppins, he was he was the chimney sweep in the old Mary Poppins movie. You must know him. When you add white to colors, you also can see their undertones really clearly. Just like you can in watercolor when you thin them out with water, you can also see their undertones. Like, is it a brown with a green undertone or is it a brown with like a red undertone? You know. So when in doubt, you can do that with your colored pencils too by just adding some, you know, white Prismacolor or whatever white you have, a nice opaque one, and then you can see the undertones. That can come in handy with color theory if you're utilizing color theory in your in your works. And the last one is coal black, which will be good. We'll be able to see what the black's undertone is. Sometimes blacks have a blue undertone. 
Sometimes it's purple, sometimes it's green. Wow, that gray is darker than I thought it would be. I'm going to lighten it further. I can mess up my white now because this is the last color, so... And I think I'm going to split that last one there because it dries darker. I'm going to add even more white to it. I need some water. Sometimes I do that on my swatch charts. I'll actually show you where I did that in another place. There we go. All right, so there we have our pastel watercolors slash gouache. Um, oop, just stuck my thumb in that. Stuck my thumb in that. <laughs> Yeah, so another place where I did a couple of, I'll have to pull you up a little bit here. Broke it down. I do it for browns often. You can see here the burnt umber of my apple barrel matte paint. Here I added uh, two shades of white to it. Just on certain colors, you want to know what it does. So, so yeah, here and there I do do that. So... We have successfully kind of made some gouache slash pastel watercolors. I think they're pretty good. Here's the intense ones. Here's the pastels. And of course, you can make them even more pastel-y depending on how much white you add to them. It's an option if you're like me and you don't want too many, you know, too much stuff hanging around your house. I don't really want too much stuff hanging around my house. I like to have a few good sets of pencils. I have like one gel crayon set, you know, the ink tents. I've got one, one watercolor set, one metallic watercolor set. I kind of just like to have one of most things. So if you're like me and you just don't want too much going on, this is an option for you. All right, let me know what you think in the comments, if this is something you would do, or you just prefer to buy the little tubes of gouache, or you prefer to buy the little pastel watercolor pan set. What do you think? What works for you? Let me know in the description below. All right. I appreciate your time. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.